As someone who has exclusively used Samsung phones since the Galaxy S3, and someone who shared literally hundreds of hidden features on Samsung phones for nearly 10 years, here are the first things I recommend doing when you get your Galaxy S24, S24 Plus, or S24 Ultra. And as always, there are time codes below so you can skip around the video to find the features you care most about. The first thing you should do is add MagSafe functionality to your S24 with an S Pen compatible MagSafe ring. This can attach directly to the back of your phone or to the back of any flat backed case. And once attached, you can connect any MagSafe accessory like a MagSafe ring, MagSafe kickstand charging pucks, MagSafe wallets, MagSafe car mounts, and more. These particular rings are from today's partner, ESR. I've been recommending their products long before they ever became a channel partner, so this was an easy partnership to say yes to. And besides these adhesive MagSafe rings, ESR also sells a couple MagSafe cases. The Flickstand case has a kickstand with a friction hinge that allows you to stand your phone up at varying degrees for portrait mode or a single angle for landscape mode. If you prefer to show off the color of your phone, the ESR hybrid case would be a better buy. Both of these cases have super tactile buttons, a good sized front lip to protect from face down drops, as well as a deep ridge to protect the cameras. And if you want even more protection, ESR has got a kit for that too. This is something I wish I put on my S22 Ultra because it got a small crack on the cameras and I didn't see it. Then we went to a water park and now the phone is completely dead. So I think I'm going to start using these. Unfortunately, these two MagSafe cases do interfere with the S24 Ultra's S Pen, causing the S Pen accuracy to get a bit wonky when it's near the magnetic ring. But ESR is currently working on a fix for that, and once ESR releases an updated version of these cases that are S Pen compatible, I'll let you know in the description and pinned comment below. In the meantime, you can just use these rings to get that MagSafe compatibility while also keeping full S Pen functionality. And I'll leave a 10% discount code and links to all these products, as well as some great MagSafe accessories in the description and pinned comment below if you're interested. Now that your phone's protected, it's time to make sure that you've transferred all of your data from your old phone, including things like messages, your home screen layout, Wi-Fi passwords, apps, and everything else. And the fastest way to do that is to swipe up to go to your applications, then tap in this search bar and type the word switch. Then you'll see this option here called smart switch. Go ahead and tap that application. This should be installed by default, but if it's not, you can find it on the Google Play Store. Once the app is open, tap receive data, then follow the prompts. And if you need help with this, I already have a super deep dive guide on this that'll show you exactly how to transfer data from an iPhone, other Samsung phone, non-Samsung Android phone, and even how to transfer data if you're not gonna have your old phone available when you get your S24. I'll have that video linked in the description and pinned comment if you're interested. The next thing you should do is become familiar with the incredibly powerful noise reduction tool that's available anytime you're on a phone call. And this is only available on the S24 series. If I pull the notification shade down twice on both of these, you'll see that only the S24 has this mic mode option at the top. If you tap this, right now I have it set to voice focus, but by default, it comes on standard. To show you how much of a difference this makes, I'm gonna go ahead and record the audio on my Galaxy S23 Ultra, and you'll be able to hear how much noise gets canceled out. And to make this challenging, I'm gonna add some pretty loud vacuum cleaner sounds. So I'm gonna leave this on standard right now. And here's what the audio sounds like without the vacuum cleaner on. I'm gonna go ahead and turn it on. That's <laughs> super loud. And I'm not even sure if the audio is being picked up on the other phone. So now I'm gonna pull the notification shade down again and switch to voice focus. And here's what that sounds like. As you can see, it gets rid of a ton of the vacuum noise. But you'll also notice that my voice isn't quite as clear as it was before. So you should only turn this on if people are having a hard time hearing you on the other side. Next, you wanna lock your favorite apps so they never close in the background. To do that, first open up your most frequently used applications, then go to your recent applications, tap the app icon, then tap keep open. This will put a little lock icon here, and once that's there, you won't be able to close this application. And while we're here, I do wanna quickly point out that Best Buy has an incredible deal right now on the S24 series. So if you haven't picked up your S24 yet, definitely check out these deals in the description and pinned comment below. Jumping back into the recent applications, you can lock up to three applications. If you try to lock a fourth application, you'll just get a gray box. And if you ever want to unlock an application, just tap the lock icon and it'll unlock. Protecting your phone from physical damage with a case was a great start, but you're also going to want to protect your phone from thieves. To do that, go ahead and swipe down your notification shade and tap the settings gear in the upper right corner. Then you're going to want to scroll down until you get to security and privacy. Go ahead and tap that. From here, you'll want to select lost device protection. 
then allow the phone to be found. And it's also helpful to enable send last location and offline finding. Once this is enabled, you'll be able to go to the Samsung Find website on a different device once Samsung Find is up and running, or the SmartThings Find website in the meantime. Once you go to this site and sign in with your Samsung account, you'll be able to see exactly where your S24 Ultra is, or you could ring it, remotely lock it, track its location in real time, or even do things like remotely erase data if it was stolen. So this is an extremely important feature to have enabled to make sure you never lose your phone. And by the way, in order to use this, you do need a Samsung account. So if you hadn't set up a Samsung account yet, all you have to do is go to settings, scroll down to accounts and backup, tap manage accounts, tap add account, then tap Samsung account. Then just go through the setup process. Physical theft isn't the only thing you should protect your S24 from. You also need to protect it from digital theft. To do this, go to settings, and I scroll down and go back to security and privacy. Then we're gonna tap app security, tap app protection, and tap turn on. What this will do is scan your phone periodically for viruses so you don't have any of your digital information stolen. Now let's look at some performance improvements that'll allow you to unlock your phone instantly and let you navigate through your apps twice as fast. Let's start with faster navigation. Jump back into settings, scroll all the way to the bottom, tap about phone, scroll down and tap software information, then tap build number seven times, then enter your password to confirm, and this will unlock the hidden developer options menu. So if we go back to the main settings page, then scroll all the way to the bottom, you'll see the new developer options menu. If you scroll about two thirds of the way down this page, you'll see these three different animation scales. If you tap one, you can reduce the animation scale to just half the speed or completely turn off these types of animations. Window animation scale is for pop-up windows like this one here. Transition animation scale is for transitioning between different windows like going back or forward into different applications. And animator duration scale is for when you're going in and out of applications. And here's a quick comparison between the one time speed and the 0.5 times speed for reference. And if you want things to be super fast, you could just completely turn the animations off. And here's a quick bonus tip. If you want to quickly switch between your two most recent applications, just double tap the recent apps button and it'll jump back and forth between them. Now let's make it faster to unlock your phone. We're gonna leave developer options, then scroll back up a bit until we get to security and privacy. Then we'll tap biometrics and tap fingerprints. Instead of just registering your fingerprint once, you should actually register your most frequently used finger twice. What this does is give your phone more data on exactly what your fingerprint looks like, giving you a much higher chance of unlocking the phone the first try. While you're scanning, it's also a good idea to use different sides of your finger to make sure the entirety of your finger is scanned. And if you've already done two scans of the same finger, but you still want three other fingers to be scanned, like maybe your other thumb and both your index fingers, you can actually scan two fingers to the same fingerprint. So if I long press fingerprint four and remove it, I can add a new fingerprint and scan both my thumb and my index finger in the same fingerprint. And when I've finished adding the fingerprint, when I tap check added fingerprints, both my thumb and my index finger are both gonna be registered as fingerprint four. But boosting your unlock speed doesn't stop here. If we back out of fingerprints, then go to face recognition. Once you've set up face recognition the first time, you should add an alternative appearance if you often wear things that'll make you look a bit different. This could be large sunglasses, a lot of makeup, or anything else that'll make you look slightly different. So your first scan will be just your face with nothing added, and the second scan will be with anything else added. And the last thing to make unlocking wildly fast is to disable this stay on lock screen until swipe. By default, this is on, but I'd already turned it off. So now if I go to my lock screen, then turn my screen on, it immediately jumps right back in. This is wildly fast face recognition. But if you'd prefer to not bypass your lock screen, you should still at least set up both sets of lock screen widgets. That's right, I said both sets. The first set of lock screen widgets is found by long pressing anywhere on the screen. From there, you'll be prompted to unlock your phone, so go ahead and do that. And that'll take you to the lock screen editor. On the S24 series, we now get this option here called widgets. And if you tap this, you get an assortment of widgets to pick from. I'm gonna go ahead and set up a reminder widget, clock widget, and Samsung health widget. And if I want, I can long press and rearrange these. And once I'm done selecting that, I'll just tap back on the wallpaper. And speaking of the wallpaper, if you tap wallpapers in the upper left corner and scroll all the way to the bottom, you'll see this section called wallpaper services. And specifically, I wanna take a look at dynamic lock screen. What this does is allow you to select from a bunch of different categories and your lock screen will show a new wallpaper every time you unlock it. 
Not only that, but every two weeks, you'll get a new set of images. So if I go ahead and select landscapes here and download it, then go back and back again, you'll see that I now have a new landscape. And if I tap done and I lock and unlock my phone, you'll see that I have a new landscape now. And once these are enabled, if you swipe in from the right edge, you'll be taken to a new screen where you can swipe through all the different wallpapers in that bundle. And if you tap the three dots in the upper right corner, you can tap hide this image if you don't want a particular image to show in the rotation. And if you wanna quickly change which wallpaper pack you're using, just tap this grid right here and select a different pack. And if you really want to, you can choose up to five different categories and it'll cycle through all the different images. Besides widgets and wallpapers, you can also customize your clock with a ton of different styles or even use a calendar instead of a clock. At the top, you can pick different clock fonts as well as different colors. But the first option is an automatic option which adapts a color based on whatever's in the background. And if you wanna make the clock bigger or smaller, you can just drag these dots right here. And while we're here, you should also change your lock screen shortcuts to something you find more useful. Personally, I find the flashlight to be more useful than the camera because I can just double press the side key to open up the camera. And more often than not, I'm sending someone messages instead of making phone calls. So I'll change this one to the messages application. Tapping the notification option allows you to change the style so you can have no notification show, icons, or have the details show. And for this one, you do get the option to change the transparency. Lastly, you should set up some contact information at the bottom in case you lose your device. Anyone who finds it won't need to unlock it to find a phone number to call. And obviously, pick a phone number other than your own so they can actually get a hold of you if they have your phone. So once you've adjusted all of those settings, the next thing you want to do is tap the clock. This will bring up your second set of widgets. And if you scroll all the way to the bottom, you'll see some settings here. So go ahead and tap that and unlock your phone. And that'll take you to your widget settings. As you can see, there's a bunch of other widgets that you can add here. And depending on which applications you have installed, as well as which devices you have connected to your phone, you'll have more or less options. If you want to change the order of them, just tap reorder and you can move these around as needed. Once you're done with this, you can just go back to your lock screen, tap the clock again, and you'll see the new order. By default, holding the side button will activate Bixby. And I personally keep this set to Bixby for a couple of reasons. First, if I jump into say the messages and tap in any text box, I can then hold the side button and use voice to text in any text box to quickly dictate a note or reply to a message. Beyond that, Bixby is the fastest way to change any feature on your phone. For example, I can just hold the side button and say, flashlight on at level one, or flashlight on at level five. You can even do more complex things like set my screen time out to two minutes. All right, I set the screen time out to two minutes. Or if you wanna to navigate to a different part of your phone, you could say something like, show my lock screen settings. Here you go. But if you're still not convinced and you just wanna change the function of the side key, all you have to do is hold it and say, change side button function. And from here, you can change the press and hold function from wake Bixby to power off menu. Now, if I hold it, it'll just bring up my power off menu. But if you ever wanna change it back, you could tap the side button settings here at the bottom of the power menu and jump right back in. I personally like Bixby, so I'm gonna turn that back on. While we're here, I also wanna point out that you could change the double press shortcut as well. So by default, if you double press the side key, it's gonna open up your camera app. But if you wanna change that, just tap open app and you can have it turn on or off your flashlight or open up any other application you have installed on your phone. I personally prefer it as a camera shortcut, so I'm gonna switch it back. Let's jump back into the messages app for a second so I can show you guys some really powerful keyboard features. I've set up some shortcuts, so all I have to do is type something like BRN, then I'll get a little option here, and if I tap this, it'll fill in with busy right now, I'll call you back later. I could also type in P email, and that'll be a personal email, or W email for a work email. You can even use these shortcuts for super long things, like if I tap sub, it's an invitation to subscribe to the channel. So if there are phrases or emails that you use all the time, you definitely need to set this up. To do this, tap this little collapse icon to get rid of the suggestions, then tap the settings gear, then tap text shortcuts, tap the plus icon, then type in whatever you want for your shortcut, then the extended phrase here. Once that's done, tap add. Now, anytime I type the letters WGL, it's gonna replace it with wanna grab lunch today. The powerful keyboard features don't stop here. If you back out of text shortcuts, scroll all the way to the top, and select languages and types, then manage your input languages. 
you can select up to four different languages to predict at the same time. But to make sure this works, you need to back out of this menu then back out one more time and scroll down a little bit to more typing options and tap that. And also make sure that multi-language text prediction is enabled. So once this feature is enabled and you've selected your languages, you can go back to your messages. And now I'll be able to get predictive text in multiple languages at the same time. And if you ever need special characters from a specific language, you can always just tap this globe icon down here and go through all your different languages to get those special characters. And a bonus tip, if you hold the space bar, you can just swipe left and right or up and down to navigate through your text and get to the exact part you wanna to get to. And if you long press the period, you can quickly select any one of these special marks. And if you ever wanna edit these marks, just tap this pencil icon and select any other mark you want. If you need to communicate with someone who isn't fluent in your primary language, you can tap this little icon here, and this will open up a live translation option. And if I tap the letters on the left, I can change the language I wanna convert to. And now I can just type everything in English, and it'll automatically convert it to Spanish in real time. And when I tap send, it'll send the message in Spanish to the person. And when that person responds, you'll get the response as they wrote it, as well as the translation directly below it. And this will automatically show both translations on your original message as well. And this is part of the Galaxy AI chat translation feature. The other two valuable features here are writing style and spelling and grammar. So if I retyped this message and then selected writing style, it'll use AI to give me a bunch of different ways to say the same thing. So there's this professional option, which is super professional, a casual option, a more social option, polite, and an emojified option. So if I wanted to use the polite option, I could just tap insert and it would change everything that I wrote. And the last AI option is spelling and grammar. And this is basically a bit more advanced spelling and grammar checker. Now let's set up some advanced features by going to settings and scrolling down until you see advanced features. The first thing I wanna point out is advanced intelligence. And this is where all of the AI features exist. So this is a great menu to look through when you first get your phone so you can get an idea of what all the AI features have to offer. And at the bottom of this page, you'll see an option here called process data only on device. If you enable this, none of the AI features will be processed on Samsung's cloud and everything will be processed only on your device. The one downside with that is you lose access to some of the features. More specifically, you'll lose access to the Samsung Notes auto format, summarize and correct spelling features, as well as the generative fill and AI photo editing features. But the rest of the features will still be available. And let me know in the comments below if you wanna see a deep dive on everything the new AI features can do. If there's enough interest in it, I'll make a dedicated video just on the AI features. For now, let's back out of here and go to the labs section. And from here, you wanna enable multi-window for all apps. By default, not every application works with multi-window or pop-up view, which I'll show you guys in a moment. So this just makes sure everything works well. And photo ambient wallpaper is a neat feature that changes your own wallpaper based on the time of day and the weather. So if I turn this on and go to my wallpaper settings, I can select this photo ambient mode and tap try now and select one of my own photos. And if you tap the play button, you can see the different modes. So you have daytime, nighttime, we got some rain in here as well. And the last thing it'll show is snow. And this is all based off of your local weather. That's not one of the first things to do. I just thought it was a neat feature to show you guys. Backing out of the labs menu, the next thing you should jump into is the multi-window settings. And for this, you wanna enable all three of these. What this will do is allow you to swipe up from the bottom with two fingers to open up split screen view, swipe down from one of the top corners to open up the window in pop-up view, and full screen in split screen view will extend the split screen windows to the very top and very bottom of the screen. If I disable this, you'll see that these windows get crunched in a bit. And again, here's with the feature on and off. Now let's back out of here and jump into motions and gestures. These are just different motions and gestures you can do with your phone to make tasks a bit easier. Most of these are on by default, but if you want even faster access to your phone, you can turn on this lift to wake feature. Once this is enabled, whenever my screen is off, all I have to do is pick up my phone and the screen will turn right on. If we back out of here, the next thing you should enable, especially if you have the S24 Ultra, is this one-handed mode option. Once you enable this, you'll be able to swipe down from the bottom and shrink the entire screen down into a smaller window. This makes it a whole lot easier to reach the upper corners with one hand. And if you ever wanna resize it, just grab one of the corners and drag it out. You can also switch it from the left to right side by tapping these arrows here or you can grab this bar here and move it up or down the side. Once you're done using this mode, you can just tap anywhere outside of it and it'll go back to normal. 
And if you'd prefer not to use the gesture method, you could switch to a button method and just double tap the home button instead. The last setting you need to change in the advanced features is towards the bottom and it's called video brightness. By default, this is set to normal, but if you set it to bright, it will automatically make your image more vibrant and brighter anytime you're watching a video in any of these applications. And it does make a significant difference, especially when your screen brightness is set to a lower level. To demonstrate this, I'm gonna drop my screen brightness down to about 50%, and then I'm gonna go ahead and jump into the YouTube application and start watching this video. And if I go back to the home screen, you'll see that it darkens up a bit. And if I jump back into the video, you'll see it brighten back up. So it does definitely make a notable difference when watching videos. Speaking of better video quality, the next thing you should do is jump into your settings and go into the display settings and scroll down until you get to screen resolution. By default, this is set to full HD+, but you can increase that resolution to QHD+. That said, even when I apply this, it's very hard for me to tell the difference between QHD+, and FHD+ even when I have my glasses on. So I highly recommend that you test out both of these resolutions. And if you can't tell the difference, just use full HD plus to save a bit of battery life. My guess is that most of you won't be able to tell the difference. Or maybe I've just got super terrible eyes and I'm the only one who can't tell. <laughs> While we're in the display settings, another feature you should enable is adaptive color tone. What this will do is give you more natural looking colors based on your lighting environment. So if the lighting in your environment is more of a warmer color tone, your screen will look a bit warmer. But if the lights in your room are a cooler bluish white color, then your screen will look a little bit more blue. But if you prefer the default cooler temperature, you can just turn that off. The next thing you should do is set up your edge panels, which are accessed by swiping in from this bar on the side. By default, you get some shortcuts on the bottom and your recent apps shown on the top. If you tap this little pencil icon, you'll be able to choose which applications you have in there. And if you drag an application on top of another one, you can create a folder and give the folder a name. Though that folder name only appears when you tap the folder. Once you've selected all your apps, you can go back to your home screen. Now when you swipe in, you'll see all those apps there and you can long press them and drag them out into the middle to open them up in pop-up view, which is especially useful for something like a calculator. Or you could long press and drag the app to the top or bottom to open it up in split screen view. And if you have two apps open in split screen view, and you resize them to be exactly how you like it, you could tap the three dots in the middle and tap this star icon, then select Apps Edge Panel. What this will do is save that apps pair right into the edge panel. So if I pull the edge panel out and swipe down, you'll see that app pair here. And if I tap this, it'll open them up in that exact same orientation. Even if I adjust the orientation and close out of those applications, like completely, I could just go back to that edge panel, tap it again, and they'll reopen in the original orientation. And there's more than just an apps edge. If you tap this settings gear, you'll be able to enable a bunch of different edge panels. One of the most useful ones is this tools panel. Once that's enabled, I can swipe in once to get to my apps edge, then swipe in a second time to go to my tools. And that'll give me access to a compass, a tally counter, my flashlight controls, a surface level, and even a ruler. Then I can always just swipe again to go back to my apps. And to be clear, this Apps Edge is always accessible from any application. So right now I'm in the YouTube app and I can still swipe in and bring the panel back out. Now let's make some significant improvements to the home screen. For starters, let's long press these widgets and stack them on top of each other. Let's add one and we'll add another one. Now I can swipe through these three widgets and access whichever one I want right from one screen. And if I long press the stack, I can tap edit stack and I can make sure auto rotate widgets is enabled. What this will do is try to show me the most relevant widget at any given time of the day. But if you'd rather have it stay on the same widget until you change it, you can just turn that feature off. The next thing we should do to the home screen is pinch in to get to the editor. You could also just long press in any empty space, then tap settings, then go to home screen grid and increase it to either five by five or five by six, because I'm pretty sure the default was four by six, and that doesn't give you a ton of room for applications and widgets. You can also change the size of your app screen grid if you want to see more applications on a single page and even increase the size of your folder grid. If you scroll further down, you'll see an option for swipe down for notification panel. I do recommend having this on. This allows you to swipe down from anywhere on your home screen to quickly get to the notification panel. If this wasn't enabled and you swiped down, it would just take you to your applications. And here's a bonus tip. If you want to quickly move applications, just long press one, tap select, then tap the rest of the applications you want 
and you can long press and drag the whole batch and use your other finger to swipe back and forth between different pages. And the last thing we're gonna do is first delete this widget, then add a new widget. And specifically, we're going to add a smart suggestions widget. Now this is an extremely useful widget to add because what it does is analyze your usage patterns, then recommend applications based on those usage patterns. Now a five by three grid is a bit much for this. So you can actually just drop this down to a single row. Now we'll go ahead and drag this over to the other page. And now I'll have quick access to my most frequently used applications. And if you long press this and jump into the settings, you can even exclude specific applications if you don't want those to be suggested. Something I almost forgot to point out in this suggestions widget is if you tap the settings again, you'll see an option here called notification access. And if you allow access to your notifications for this, the suggestions will start to include quick actions for things like replying to a message. Now let's unlock a powerful hidden camera menu. To do this, you're gonna need to go to Samsung's Galaxy Store. Make sure it's Samsung Store and not the Google Play Store because it's only available in Samsung Store. Once you're in there, you're gonna search for an application called Camera Assistant and install it. And once it's installed, you can go to the camera app, then tap the settings gear and scroll all the way to the bottom. And you see a new menu here called Camera Assistant. If you tap this, you'll get access to a ton of incredible camera features that were previously unavailable. Now there's a lot here, so I'm only gonna cover a few of the important ones. For starters, you can change your zoom shortcuts. By default, you'll get the four main optical zoom levels plus the 10 times digital zoom level. But you can enable the two times and 100 times zoom shortcuts from here as well. So now if I go back into the camera app, you'll see that the two times and 100 times options are right there. So if you often take long distance photos or you like that middle range of the two times digital zoom, these are great features to enable. If you have some skin blemishes that you wanna hide in your photos, you can tap picture softening and set that to either medium or high. What this will do is smooth out your photos a bit to hide those blemishes at the cost of a bit of sharpness. If you wanna take pictures faster, you can turn on a quick tap shutter, which takes a picture as soon as your finger touches the shutter button. However, this will be more prone to blur from camera shake when pressing the button, so you may wanna test this one out before keeping it on all the time. On the flip side, if you notice that your shots aren't always in focus, you could turn on prioritize focus over speed. This is off by default, but if you enable it, you'll get better focus at the cost of slower photos. The next setting is huge, and it's something I use all the time, and it's called timer multi-photo options. If you select this, you can choose how many pictures are taken whenever you use the timer. That means I could have seven pictures taken one second apart every time I use the timer. And since I've got four little kids, this makes it so much easier to get a great shot the first time. And in case you're wondering, if you set up the timer and start using this feature, you'll see all these shots that it's going to take. But if you've taken a few shots and you don't wanna take any more, you can just tap the stop icon and it'll stop wherever you're at. And while we're in the main camera menu, if you jump into the video mode, you'll definitely wanna switch the resolution from full HD to UHD so you get a much better video quality. And while 8K may be tempting to get the highest resolution, this will limit how much you could zoom and it's gonna be a pretty big file anytime you film. So I recommend just sticking with UHD. Jumping back into the photo mode, if you're gonna be taking a lot of selfies, you wanna tap this layers icon in the upper right corner, then tap color tone and adjust it to match your skin tone better. If you're new to photography and you never really like how your shots come out, you should go to settings and enable shot suggestions. This will give you a dot on the screen to help you take better photos. Just line up the white dot with the center of the screen and when the dot turns yellow, you'll be lined up for a good shot. Next, you wanna jump back into the settings and scroll down a bit. The next thing you should enable is grid lines. What this will do is give you grid lines on your preview and that'll make it a lot easier to line up your shots. Whether you wanna get something right in the center or if you wanna line something up at one of the thirds. And if you switch to video mode, it'll also give you a level line so you know you're getting a level shot. Just below the grid lines option, you'll also wanna enable location tags. What this will do is add location info to your photos, so if later on you wanna find just the photos from a specific vacation to a specific place, you can find them easily just by searching for that location. If you tap shooting methods, you'll see an option here called floating shutter button. If you enable this, then go back to your camera, you'll get a floating shutter button that you can move around your screen to make it easier to take a photo no matter how you're holding your phone. Once you're done with the floating shutter button, you can just drag it down to the regular shutter button and it'll disappear. And anytime you wanna take it back out, just drag back in from the shutter button. Once you're done adjusting all your camera settings, you should go to more, then download Expert Raw. 
This is how you get insane star photos like this. Once it's downloaded, just open up the mode, accept the permissions, then tap this constellation icon in the upper right corner, and you can choose to either hide or show a star guide. And if you choose to show it, you see the constellations that your camera is pointing towards. So as I move this around, you'll see different constellations. You can then change the long exposure time from four minutes to seven minutes, or all the way out to 10 minutes if you really wanna get a bright shot. And speaking of excellent star photos, you should also make yourself familiar with hyperlapse mode so you can get excellent star time lapses like this, or star trails like this one. To do this, back out to your more menu, then select hyperlapse, then change the resolution from Full HD to UHD to get a better video, and change this top right setting from auto to 300 times. And you'll see a little star icon here as well. As for the duration, you're gonna to wanna to keep this set to infinity so that it doesn't stop your time lapse when you don't want it to. But if you really wanted to, you could have the time lapse stop automatically after 10 minutes, which wouldn't really give you very good star photos at all, or all the way out to 300 minutes, which would give you a pretty good video. And if you wanna turn on star trails, you just have to tap this star icon at the bottom right corner. Now just set your phone up on a tripod, tap the record button, and let it go for at least 30 minutes to an hour. And the last thing you should do with the camera app is learn how to create a slow motion video from a regular speed video. All you have to do is start playing the video, then long press anywhere on the screen, and it'll automatically convert it to a slow motion video using artificial intelligence. And if you wanna make that portion of the video permanently slow motion, just tap the pencil icon, then scrub to the part of the video where you want it to be slow motion, then tap adjust speed, and select whatever speed you want. Then you can readjust that to however long you want it to be. And if I save this, the video will always play in slow motion at that part of the video. Now let's enable some hidden quick toggles. To do this, put your notification shade down twice to reveal your quick toggles, then tap this edit icon, then tap edit here, and you'll see all these extra quick toggles below. There's a lot here, but there's only a few that I wanna point out. The first two are camera access and microphone access. What these do are completely remove access to your camera or microphone from every application, including the built-in camera. To add these to your other toggles, all you have to do is tap them. And if you want to move them around, just long press and drag it wherever you'd like. Now, once I tap done and back out, go back to my quick toggles, I'll be able to remove access to my camera or microphone with just a couple taps. Now, if I go into the camera app, it's going to be all black and I'll get this notification asking me to turn on the camera access. But if I don't, even if I switch to the front facing camera, the camera still won't be accessible. And bonus tip, if you wanna to get to your quick toggles faster, you can just swipe down from the top with two fingers and it takes you right into the quick toggles menu. Let's jump back into that editing menu because there's a few more awesome quick toggles that I wanna show you. The next one you wanna add is always on display and I'll show you why in a moment. And the last two are wireless power share and calls and texts on other devices. So I'm gonna tap done here. And before we go to those toggles, I wanna to point out this quick settings instant access option. If you tap this and enable this, you'll be able to jump right into your quick settings by just swiping down from the top right corner. If you swipe down towards the left, it'll just pull up your notification shade. And now that we're back here, I'm gonna go over one page and we're gonna take a look at the always on display toggle. Now you could tap this to turn the always on display on or off, but if you long press it, it'll take you into the always on display settings. And the always on display gets some big improvements on the Galaxy S24 Ultra. Specifically, it'll show your lock screen wallpaper while it's in always on display mode. And by default, it's only gonna show when you tap your screen. So if I tap my screen, it'll show the always on display for a few seconds without fully turning it on. But if we go back into the always on display settings, you can tap this when to show option and switch that to always. So no matter what, your always on display is just always going to be shown, but this could kill some battery life, especially if it's always on when it's in your pocket or in a bag or face down. So instead, I recommend going back into those settings and switching that to auto. This will only show the always on display when it's out of your pocket and face up. If it's face down or in a pocket or in a bag or other really dark place, it won't turn the always on display on and it'll help you save some battery life. And if you want the always on display on but you still wanna save a bit of battery life, you can disable the show lock screen wallpaper option. And now when I lock my screen, I'll just get the time and widgets. So now let's go back into the quick toggles. And the next one I wanted to show you was wireless power sharing. Now, this is how you charge another device on the back of your S24 Ultra. So if I flip this over and I take off my watch, I just line it up in the center of this ring and it starts charging. And this will work with just about any wireless charging device, including an iPhone. And bonus tip, if you plug your phone in with at least a fast charger, then enable wireless power sharing, 
you'll be able to charge both your phone and another device at the same time with a single charger. The last toggle was calls and texts on other devices. And if you enable this, you'll be able to make calls and send texts on other Samsung products like a Galaxy Tab S9. You just have to make sure that this is enabled on both devices. If we swipe back over to the left, you should see a toggle here called Link to Windows. And this should absolutely be enabled because what this does is allow you to control the entirety of your S24 Ultra right from your Windows-based computer. I personally use this all the time for sending text and transferring images back and forth from my phone and computer. If you want significantly higher volume and better sound quality out of your S24 Ultra, particularly for movies, then you absolutely need to go to your quick toggles and enable Dolby Atmos. This makes a massive difference in audio quality when listening to movies, and this even works with earbuds, and it doesn't even have to be Samsung branded earbuds. I tested this with Apple AirPods Pro, and it still worked great. Just keep in mind that the volume boost and quality boost is primarily going to be heard when watching movies and will only make a little bit of a difference for things like music and YouTube. Button navigation is pretty good, but if you want to free up a bit more screen real estate and get some more fluid navigation options, jump into settings, scroll down to display, then scroll down until you see navigation bar and tap that and switch from buttons to swipe gestures. This will free up space along the bottom and give you iPhone style navigation where swiping up takes you to your home screen, swiping up and holding brings up your recent applications, swiping in from one of the sides acts as a back button, and this does work from both the left and right side, unlike the iPhone where it only works from one of the sides occasionally and <laughs> not in every application. And you can also swipe in from the corners to activate Google Assistant. If you have any specific medical conditions, you should go to the phone app, then go to your contacts, then select your contact specifically, then scroll to the bottom, tap medical information, then tap the pencil icon and add in any medical information that you have. Once you save that information, a first responder just has to pick up your phone, swipe on it and tap this emergency call option, then tap medical info and they'll be able to see all of your medical information if you're not conscious to tell them. And I know for some people, this could absolutely be life-saving. So I highly recommend setting it up. If you have the S24 Ultra specifically, the next thing you want to do is take out your S Pen, then tap this pen icon and set up your shortcuts by tapping this add option. From here, you'll be given access to a bunch of S Pen specific features or access to any application you have installed. One of the features I use most is this magnify feature. What this will do is give me a little magnifying glass that makes it easier to see what's on the screen. And this is especially useful if I left my reading glasses somewhere and I need to quickly read a text or something on the screen. And you can choose from 150% zoom to 300% zoom. And you can also make the zoom box bigger if you need to. The create note shortcut is also pretty useful for quickly creating a note, but you don't really need that one because all you need to do is hold the S Pen button down and double tap the screen. And that'll automatically create a new note for you anyway. And while we're talking about the S Pen, if you're brand new to the S Pen, you should also know that if your screen is off, then you pull the S Pen out you'll be able to take a screen off memo and write any notes that you want without ever unlocking your device. Then you can just tap save and that'll get saved to the Samsung notes application. Now that's just barely scratching the surface of what the S Pen is actually capable of. And if you want to see a ton of more really useful S Pen features, then you can check out my dedicated S Pen video by clicking the card above or the links in the description and pinned comment. Up until this point, we've really only covered the basic S24 features that you should set up but now it's time to get advanced. We're gonna enable a hidden app by going to your quick toggles, swiping over until you see a quick toggle called modes, and instead of tapping it, long press on it. This is going to take you into the modes and routines application. And this is the most powerful app on any Samsung device. In short, this lets you automate literally any action on your phone or any connected smart device based on just about any condition you can think of. This feature is so powerful that I had to make a dedicated video just on this application. And you can check that out by clicking this video here. Or if you're all featured out for now, you can check out the best accessories for your new Samsung phone by clicking this video instead. And if you want to see some wildly advanced S24 features, consider subscribing and turning on notifications because those are coming in a future video. That's it for this tech episode. God bless guys and I'll catch you in the next one.